Hi, good afternoon. Um, it's great to be here. And all this is going to sound like television, but actually it's not going to be television at all. So first, I'm very happy to say hello to Kushanabo, Kushanabo Chaudhuri, whose name rhymes with mine. <laughs> With my name Lorunavo in Bangla, and this is where people usually get in and ask, "Are you related?" The answer is yes. Of course, of course, yes. of course. All all Bengali intellectuals are related, and we've been told that this is a chat of intellectuals. Shikh Shomai the kamikub bhai bhai achi. It's been worrying the hell out of me. <laughs> But anyway, um, so um, you know, this is for the book that you can see. I'm sure you can see. Uh, but in case you can't, I'm still going to hold it up right here. It's called the Epic City, with the subtitle "The World on the Streets of Calcutta," and it's been written by Kushan Abu here. And um, so my 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 first point to all of you and to you, Kushan Abu, is that we are having a plate of nimki here. Mm -hmm. uh it's not to be confused with namkeens in any other indian language because this nimki is unique to calcutta right so where would you go to uh, go in calcutta for this kind of nimki and you go to a lot of places but are you asking me what would be the best place ha huh? what in our shop maybe in uh sambaja okay so how do you get there now you tell me <laughs> you the bar, bar. yeah no and now you now you walk me through this streets of calcutta yeah, to uh, get to this you know he is famous because the netaji was one who used to get his uh, nimki from there Uh, there are all these places here. Really? Yeah. Tell yes. me. Do you know more about the story of yeah, Netaji getting his nimki? Yeah, it's so weird. It's so weird. It's so weird. Netaji got his nimki from all great men mm. ate fried foods. That is the thing that we have to understand. <laughs> I know this place. Do you mean all great Bengali men or all? Great? <laughs> Perhaps. Oh, I don't know. Perhaps only great Bengali men ate. <laughs> Perhaps all great men ate Bengali. Ate fried food. But certainly all the great Bengali men ate fried food. Mm. There is a place I have been to that uh, uh, Ramkrishna used to eat. Tell me about it. Uh, in Bangalore, that's still there. Ah, so tell us about these and two places now. The <laughs> Nimki and the where, how you Ramkrishna get there, and what you'll see now at about four thirty in the afternoon. What you see if you go there now? What do you see? I think you can see people buying all these chandni and Nimki and all this. Uh, that's uh, it's uh, in uh, in Shwabajar. If you go north from Hathiwagan, if you keep going right. north. Huh. Uh, on the tram line, Bihar Shwabajar, you will see. Uh, and for those who are not from Kolkata, where is Hathiwagan? Adivagan is in North Calcutta, in the north northern part of the city, the old black town, uh, which was the part of the city that the the Indians used to live in. And Adivagan is a beautiful place that that has a market. It is one of the places where the more wealthy uh, kind of trading Bengali traders would live. Why is it called Hathi Pagan? I don't know. Does it have anything to do with Hathi? I have no idea. Hathi trade, I can just imagine. <laughs> okay, so Nimki there. Which are the other places you would go to for a a An evening snack. Be careful, jol khawar. Jol khawar. I mean, off the top of my head, I was thinking of Udi Ram, which is a place in College Square where they make right. uh, kochuri and chola dal. Right. So just describe this kochuri and chola dal. Kochuri, kochuri. These are things we have. I mean, now we have moved beyond them. But right. uh, chola kochuri would be like uh, like puris, but mm. they have some kind of dal inside. Right. And um, they are made out of flour, not uh, atta, maida, but not atta, and then. They'll be fried, crisp, and 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 uh, they'll uh, sort of slowly uh, uh, become uh, uh, sort of pot-bellied as they're fried. Mm. Kulko, as Kulko. you say in Bengali. And uh, and then uh, around yeah, like four thirty-five, if you go there, you can get that and this yellow dal, uh, which is a bit sweet. It's What kind coconut. of dal? Chola dal. Chola dal. Mm. Yeah, with little coconut kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Now I'm just you know, I know it's making tasting me, from memory. Exactly. Yeah, no, no, it's making me very hungry. <laughs> uh, that was just off the top of my head. Yeah. I thought, especially on a day like this when it's raining and all this, nice to kind of have that. Then you have a cup of tea and uh, get on with your day. Um, yeah. yeah. But so so much of your book, inevitably, any book about Kolkata has to have food. Food. In it. Yeah, yeah. But what I really like is that your food is mostly not cooked in homes. No. Oh. Because there's a book about the streets. So. You know, I, 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 I the taste ran through my mouth as I was <laughs> quite frankly. But <laughs> what I also really like is that most most of you, you're a North Calcutta boy, yeah. right? So tell us, it, to, tell us the difference between North and South Kolkata. What does it mean for people in Kolkata? What does it mean? What might it mean for someone who's reading the book who's not from Calcutta? Sure. So uh, basically, the North is North of. Central Calcutta. Central Calcutta was the British part of the city, mm -hmm. and uh, so I mean Calcutta is a British invention. So there was no Calcutta before. There were a few villages there. Now, once the British came, they set up this 
took over this area where you, many of you, if you've been to Calcutta, you've been to those places, Esplanade, mm. Park Street, mm. Victoria Memorial, Vividi Bar, Galaxy, all of that. That is the old British part, White, White Town. And then north of that, once you cross the north of um, Vividi Bar and Lal Bazaar and all the government buildings, uh, up Chitpur, um, that is the old native part of the city. The initially, initially, those areas are sort of all the different um, Indian kind of trading communities, right? The Bora Muslim, uh, Indian also Armenian, mm -hmm. uh, Jewish, so all of these people mm -hmm. settled there. Mm -hmm. And then the Bengalis as mm -hmm. you go further north. Mm -hmm. And that's the north. And um, that has been there for 300 years, right, maybe more. Right. The south was mostly built after 47, um, when the city expanded. Before that, the south was primarily um, uh, a kind of hinterland kind of thing. And so uh, south of White Town, uh, places like Baligan, the Gold Park, um, all of these places were built um, as kind of middle upper middle class areas mm. after 47. And then south of that, what we now call South Calcutta, which and when I was a kid was thought of as outside Calcutta, were the rest of the refugee areas, mm. Yadavpur, uh, Guria, mm. Taligans, mm. um, which were settled by, uh, squatted by refugees. And they're called, ref often referred to as colonies. Colonies, colonies, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now they have become kind of part of South Calcutta. That's right. Back on the Kolkata stretched and yeah. swallowed even even the suburbs further, like Al Nurendipur. Yeah, almost Nurendipur, yeah, exactly. Because Kolkata yeah. 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 cannot yeah. expand yeah. east-west, right? There's mm -hmm. swamp on one side yeah. and river on the other side. Yeah. So it has to go north-south. North, north, north. Mm. So the historical difference between north and south, I mean, even the north now has expanded further north, mm. but the historical difference, I would say, you know, so the north is older. It is, uh, you know, the physicality of the north is different. Mm. The north is, uh, the south doesn't have the same kind of architecture as the north. Mm. Mm. Because the north is, there are some broad avenues, but then it's mostly a lot of alleys and lanes. Which are all also called avenues. <laughs> yeah. so, so you have a kind of way of navigating mm. the city, mm. which is primarily on foot, yeah. I would say. And which is also from memory, in the sense that you kind of have to know how to go through certain shortcuts to get from one point to the other. Uh, the South, I think, is a little, was planned later. So it has a slightly more um, of an open kind of typical cartography, you know, of uh, cross streets and, and a kind of... Uh, but I say this because I think that the mentality of people in the North is also more labyrinthine as a result of it. You know, people, are, people live in these kind of very close, tight, um, worlds that are uh, that that are difficult to penetrate if you're not you know even from para to para like even dial exchange you know okay. from para to para you know you will go from one part to another para and you can when these things are changing now the whole language is changing yeah sure but historically yeah. we would make fun of people you know the the sounds of the Bengali language will shift if you you know move into you know uh, you know across neighborhoods mm -hmm. in the north. Um, and all the great institutes of Calcutta, which people outside tend to associate Kolkata with, also came up in the north, right? Yeah. I mean, from the football clubs. Yeah, Mohanbagan Club, yeah. Uh, Mohanbagan yeah. Club. Which is in this alley. In yeah, Samaj. and there's a road named after it. Mohanbagan Road. Mohan now there's a statue of this, those 11 guys who beat the British in 1911. Inside that, that right. one goalie, you can go and uh, see. Uh, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and um, Rabindranath, of course. Of course, yeah. All of them. You can walk from Rabindranath's house, Vivekananda's house, Bidashagar's house. Jagadish Musa's house. I mean, you were just walking distance. So that whole, house. Whole, whole Bengal renaissance <laughs> it's all there. was all right there. Yeah. And yet people tend to think of North Kolkata as dingy <laughs> and <laughs> down market and That's so right. on, right? Yeah. So what does this say about Kolkata? The fact that, you know, the, the premium has shifted to to the south and to the to the eastern suburbs and so on. I think we don't even know who we are, actually. I mean, I mean, we know who we are by the experiences. You know, I mean, that's the reason I tried to write the book in mm -hmm. that way, which is to write it basically on experiences. You know, like, not what, you know, it's like, in the sense, experiences in the sense of, okay, what is it actually the city in which I live or the city that I experience day to day, um, what I feel, what I eat, mm -hmm. where I go, mm -hmm. how I walk, mm -hmm. You know, very simple, basic things of it of of, of your day to day experience, versus some kind of ideology you have of what the city right. is supposed to be or what you have read, um, and uh, I think the reason that people reproduce uh, things that are not true mm. to their experience is because mm. those are the things that they have read, mm. not because those are the things that uh, they experience. Uh, so you know, it's like there's this one movie I this, so this. Uh, there's a Godard movie about making a, a movie about uh, uh, industrial strike. Right. So the first time that these very you know, like well-meaning filmmakers have mm. gone mm. into a factory mm. where they're having mm. a strike. Mm. 
and they're interviewing people. And they say, and they interview all these people. And then you can hear kind of the internal monologue of the people. I think this is how it is. I have this memory of it. Of the people who are giving the interviews. Mm -hmm. And the people who are giving the interviews, all of a sudden when they're asked to be interviewed, when they are interviewed, they start reproducing what they have heard on TV of other striking workers. Right. And and you can hear the internal monologue saying, no, that, that's not actually what's happening for me. You know, like, my story is not that, yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm starving because I haven't eaten for three days because they didn't give me wages and the mm -hmm. bosses. Mm -hmm. My story is something different. It's also mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. But I cannot tell that story mm -hmm. because I've never heard that story. And the point of that movie is that it's not so simple that you just go and put a camera in somebody's face right, and you will right. get reality. Because if that reality has never been shown, then you won't get that feeling. You'll just get reproduction of whatever has been shown. Mm -hmm. So you know, what I really liked about your book, there's something that stood out for me. One of the things was that you it's not a book of interviews and meetings with well-known people. You haven't, you haven't met politicians, no. film stars, uh, industrialists, nothing like that. That's great. Secondly, it's mostly outdoors, as, as the sub that suggests. You're mostly out on the streets yeah. or in buildings, but certainly not in, in domestic spaces. In a big way, except that very fantastic account of uh, hunting for a flat. <laughs> yeah. That's not exactly that, but I love the doggedness of the broker who keeps yeah. it. Even that is outside. I yeah, say. even that is outside. <laughs> outside. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, now, what I, in this context, Kolkata has become quite familiar to a number of people in India now, thanks to a number of Hindi films being said there. I think it started with Kahani. Kahani I yeah. don't know if it started, but Kahani was Kahani, one big yeah. one. Then there have been a couple of films featuring uh, Amitabh Bachchan, right? There was Piku part of which was yeah. set in Kolkata. Yeah. So, so how do you think, you know, Calcutta of Bollywood, which, it, which tries to show a sort of, attempts to show middle class Calcutta. And then there's of course then so the contemporary Bengali cinema as well, yeah. which also tries to show uh, very different, you know, murders taking place and crime and so yeah. on. So how, what's the relationship you think between what we see on celluloid of Kolkata yeah. or, and what the city really is? Or from your point of view, what do you think the city is? Yeah, I, I, I have seen both of those films, mm -hmm. Piku and... Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think Kani is a nice film, actually. I think Kani is, uh, you know, I, I, I mean, it's actually, I think, a beautiful film about Calcutta. Mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, you know, I think the story is, is fine. I mean, they put a story because you can't just show footage of Calcutta, but mm -hmm. uh, maybe also Vidya Balan and, you know, it's a lot of her, her strength and all these things to dig those two actors, but they show a kind of, so much of the humor is a kind of, it's a, lo it's, it's a, it's a loving humor that only somebody who who loves Calcutta can portray, you know, like, you know, the way we pronounce words in Hindi. And little jokes is, the, you know, the, there's like a joke about running water. I remember this kid who comes, you know, mm -hmm. they, the yeah. Yeah. They, they're, they're running water, is the kid who comes with. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a hug back to, uh, to um, uh, Shotojitra, there is a film. So there's a scene. Okay, there's, there's a scene in uh, his second film huh. um, where he says, um, uh -huh. uh, running water uh -huh. and, uh, and the hotel manager says running water to Nita but running servant Pavan. <laughs> so I think it was a very bad quote as it were, you know, sort of hat tip. I didn't know that like so that's a it's like an homage to uh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I noticed that you do use, for example, Ray himself when yeah. you were trying to talk about the history of Kolkata that you haven't experienced yeah, for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Does that work for you, using yeah, yeah. cinema as a mediator? So yeah. yeah, cinema, Ray and Riti caught up a lot. Mm. I, mean, and Riti caught up. I think that, uh, and this indoor-outdoor thing I think also is important because I think that, you know, um, the, I think my father always used to say that Ray was a filmmaker of, the, of drawing rooms and Riti of the streets. Mm. I think there's some truth to that, which is not to reduce you know, in Bengal also, we have a, we have a kind of East Bengal Monmohan thing going on mm. with Ray and Kota, which is a ridiculous. Mm. No other society, if you had two or three only good filmmakers, you wouldn't be pitting them. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, I don't think in Japan they are saying Osu versus Kurosawa yeah. or something. Yeah. You know? uh, uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, I mean, they, they, I mean, Ray, Kota, Mayal Sen, they were all fantastic, phenomenal filmmakers. And the people who are making films now are obviously not, you know, I mean... But Kolkata is eternally obsessed with these rivalries, na? Yeah, it's I know when it's Shiraz versus Arsenal, when it comes to Bengal, and so on. <laughs> but I just gonna say, Rithik's in the particular race films. I think you know. I, I mean, I, I wrote about um, uh, 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 Shyamoto, mm, yeah. uh, which I think I think I mean your translation was. So I, but I think that uh, Ray's movie of Shyamoto is actually even better than Shyamoto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. It's a phenomenal movie which happens only in drawing rooms, but it shows the whole city yeah. through this. And a bit of the factory. And the factory, yeah, a little bit of the factory, yeah. yeah. Um, but if you get a whole picture of Calcutta without seeing anything, yeah. 
Um, but Vithik's films, I think Vithik's films, there are almost no interior spaces at mm -hmm. all. He is a vagabond and uh, uh, always just wandering. I mean, you know, and uh, and that I think, you know, that and I think for Vithik it was also an existential condition that you know to be not at home, you know, to 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 never be at home mm -hmm. in in sort of the modern age. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that uh, for him, the city, I think it was not that all these loving relations, it was a very fraught, difficult relationship with the city. Mm -hmm. But the films that came out of that tension, the scatter that they show, I think is very powerful. Um, yeah. Very so influential for me. In, in, in some ways, your book is kind of a rhythmic kind of view, right? I mean, <laughs> um, I mean, in the sense, it's it's about uh, it's outdoors. It's not about people in their drawing room, minus the anguish. Yeah. But it's it's. it's I mean, there is anguish also in the book. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I think there's a kind of book. Is, I think Rithik understood. I mean, something that uh, actually, in that sense, I think Rithik understood um, the history of Bengal much better mm. than anybody else. I think that, and that I think for me, uh, in that sense, Rithik was very useful. That he understood, particularly the. Um, the centrality of partition uh, for Bengal, not as just something that happened, uh, uh, but as mm. as the central sort of uh, fact of existence. I mean, it mm. would be like to say something that happened would be like saying, you know, to a person who has only one leg that having you know lost one leg is something that happened to you. It's not something that happened to you. Yeah. You are a, a different kind of person. You have, have been, are forever changed and hobbled, um, and uh, I. Very few people understood that. that uh, I think uh, in uh, very few people have understood that even now. I think, which is why uh, they think. I think we have yet to understand him fully as a filmmaker. Um, probably the uh, other person. I mean, that I have read from the outside. I mean, is, is Manto. I think you know mm. that uh, that uh, I mean, it's interesting. I, I think that uh, Roshan Kapoor wrote that book. You know, Manto and uh, yeah. Dalit. Dalit. Mm. But I think the real thing is Manto and Ritik. Mm. They are like you know. They both understood what actually happened in this country in the 20th century, you know. So I tried to learn a lot from. I mean, I, that I was very influential for me in understanding what happened to the city because I was born in 78, right? After all of those things happened, you know. Um, so and nobody explained. The history books didn't explain. Yeah. Nobody explained how you ended up in the situation that you ended up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like those films, in some way, were a clue, you know, to the kind of city that I found myself in. Yeah. So you know, it, um, you you do these scenes so very well because you don't just do impressionistic uh, vignettes. You actually take a scene in which you are present and you take it from beginning to end, and you bring out you know the people who are there. For example, I'm thinking of the one that I was perhaps most moved by um, was the scene of the Buddh begin. <laughs> which I'm assuming is a sort of take off of the Bhutshonda. Which, which, uh, which is the high It's very yeah, interesting yeah. because Bhutshonda was the, was the highbrow uh -huh. officially established. Is it still there? I don't think they were all mostly dead and gone. So that was the official ladda of the uh, well established writers and poets in the evening. So of course the, the people who had not made it there decided to preempt them by meeting every Wednesday afternoon in this little room in College Street and you've got this fantastic account of this one poet who is still so moved despite everything by women he sees that he's compelled to write poetry about them. And I was thinking, that, you know, in a sense sometimes you think that are these people even in the real world? Is this the same world that we live in? Yeah. And then the next question is maybe that is the real world and maybe we are the ones who are in this post-liberalization economic bubble with, you know, chasing other things. Maybe this is not it. Who is in this world? I mean, this is the, I mean, I feel like I have a kind of, you know, ideological thing. Like, mm. I mean, who in Calcutta is living in a post-liberalization economic yeah, bubble? Yeah. I mean, literally. Almost like, no one. No, right? almost no one. I mean, my, you know, I mean, I think about, I come from a very big family. So my father was one of 13, my mother is one of seven, right? So as a scientist. Uh, yeah, they're they're both scientists. Both your parents were scientists. But they come from big families. Mm. Most of them are in Calcutta. So all my cousins and all of them are in Calcutta, right? When we get together, I mean, I see, okay, so people have bought cars and, you know, they you know, they, you know, have nicer clothes and some, you know, job in an, you know, some of them will have a job in an MNC or whatever. But you scratch the surface and you sort of talk to them and you see what the jokes they make yeah. and the things that they enjoy and, you know, the stories they'll tell you about what happened. I mean, they're not people who are living in a post-liberalization world. They are people who are a product of the streets of the city. They are... We have not changed, and if we change them, we will, I mean, who knows what horror will happen, because, you know, uh, there's still a city where, you know, uh, you can be 
a bad poet and be respected for doing that. <laughs> it is an honorable profession. <laughs> I knew so many guys when I was, I mean, 22, 23, I mean, I mean sometimes my friends were still who the only thing that they did was basically they would do some tuitions mm. and then they would go to National Library yeah, right. and read and write. For years they were doing this. This was a normal way to be a 20 something person yeah. in the city of Calcutta. Yeah. And it was socially accepted. Of course, their families probably wanted them to get married and have a job and all this. Huh. But they did not treat them like pariah. They did not mm. say, you know, why? Like, mm. you know, that space. I mean, one of the things I find the fundamentalism of this kind of, you know, this ideology that we are now in some new country, in some new age, is that I don't find such people in, in Delhi, you know. Even given the prosperity of Calcutta, it's a poor place. How could it accommodate so many people yeah. who were pursuing other kinds of lives, who valued things that were not just how to have a job and make money and buy a house and, mm -hmm. you know. That and they still do. Still. That's the important thing. I mean, 30, 25 years after liberalization began. It is still there as a value. I think. There's so many people who pursue things. I mean, I talk about people who pursue things. I mean, even that library that is there, you know, the, this magazine library. Yeah. This is the example of the kind of people that they pursue things where they have a job, but the job is basically just a hobby. Yeah. Or yeah, something. The real thing is Budichwana. Budichwana, and then that's an ampers the less. But the real passion that they have is something completely different. But they're collecting something, they're yeah. writing something, they're making something. Yeah, you mentioned that collector, for example, the one who collects those amazing things, including very tiny, tiny things. Yeah, things. and yeah. little magazine. He has the whole library of yeah. little magazines. Yeah, he's the guy. Yeah. But there's so many people like that in Calcutta mm -hmm. who still run. You know, who are yeah, for who have. Who are not slaves of um, some market logic? Who are doing something that is based on some other passion of the? I mean, think about the thing of the whole pujo culture in the city, right? There's no market logic. I mean, you can say it's sponsored in this, but at yeah. the end of the day, it's yeah. all local clubs, guys who get together who are doing this. You know, thousands of clubs mm. at the neighborhood level. People who are you know in Bengali we say gorake uh, gorake mustara, mm. right? Like. Yeah. <laughs> Ignoring your domestic duties and, yeah, and you're saving the world. Yeah. Saving the world something. I mean, yeah. But I mean this is a very small example, but I mean all kinds of different things, activities that go on in the city, you know. And yet this is the precise thing for which many people look down on Kolkata and its people. I mean you can look down, but imagine if it wasn't there, right? I mean, what is our culture without that? Yeah, what would India be like without Calcutta? I don't know. If there was a Calcutta shaped hole in India, yeah. what do you think would happen? I don't know. I mean, and, and I don't know what would happen to Calcutta if that culture wasn't there, like how we would survive, yeah. because that is actually the only thing that keeps us civilized. We That is how we know to be, you know, if tomorrow we were all just, uh, I don't know what this country would be like, and I, I mean, the country is a big place, how many places have I been, but as far as the city is concerned, I don't know, I think we would kill each other, and mm. we have killed each other. That's true. I, that's one of the things I write about. Yeah, in this, that there is nothing inborn also in Bengal or in Calcutta. I mean, we have the history of having, I mean, in 1946, you know, the partition came out of Calcutta. We butchered each other, that's thousands right. of people. Yeah. And you very rightly say that this is something that people don't even acknowledge, even in Kolkata. Yeah. They just yeah. it's never happened. It's never happened, as if it could not happen. So thousands of people made a conscious effort to build a different kind of society, so this would not happen again. Yeah. You know, it didn't just change by accident. I mean, you have to understand when you say that there are potholes in the road, yes, but there's no butchery in the roads. You know, how do you think that, so fine, we didn't fix the potholes, but we fix people from murdering each other because of their religion. I mean, you know, I mean, look at the country around you today, you know. And so, how do you think those things happen? That doesn't happen. There was no market, you know, for, uh, you know, civilization. You know, nobody was willing to pay a price for that. People, you know, uh, people, made a lot of effort. There was a lot of collective effort among people who were not in your house, who were strangers, who you had to go out and engage with and build a different kind of society. Yeah, yeah. So there's, I noticed that you keep saying we. Now I'm going to refer to a part of the book where you are accosted and your identity is questioned. And because uh, you know you are you are happy to um, have coffee in Starbucks when you're in the U.S., but in Kolkata, oh, by you my know, wife, by yeah. your wife, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, oh, yeah. and only why only partners. But I did you know <laughs> point out these things ruthlessly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and and uh, and she says that you know in in the U.S. you would only drink coffee in a Starbucks, and once you right, didn't right, eat right. at a restaurant because the waiter had a dirty shirt. Dirty shirts, yeah. But here you won't have your tea except at a dirty roadside stall. <laughs> so no, so that's not my question. Uh, I've forgotten what my question was. Yeah, no, I remember now. But and and she also points out there that you were born in Buffalo. Yeah, and, I'm and, 
crypto American, yeah. yeah. And then you were in New Jersey, yeah. and then you went to Princeton and yeah. so on. And you you've been to Kolkata, broadly speaking, twice. I mean, two large chunks of time you have spent there. Is that right? My childhood, and then going back. And then going home. back as an adult. So the question is: Yet you are saying we, and yeah. you speak Bangla without any accent. You speak better Bangla than I do. I still dare say <laughs> at this point of time, I've lived 22, 25 years outside of Calcutta now. And um, you, you consider yourself a Calcutta, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I'm also an American, but I also consider myself a Calcutta. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. You can be more, more than, more one, than one thing. More than one thing, absolutely. In spite of yeah, but do you think that you consider yourself a Calcutta and in such a good way and a positive way, and dare I, dare I say what others would call a slightly romantic way, although I don't subscribe to that word, because you don't live there? No, it's a very good question. Because I don't live, because I did not live there? I think there are a lot of things that I'm very aware of because I could have chosen not to live there. Mm. Mm. I mean, I read about this in the book also, that I think in a large part, at least at a conscious level, at a subconscious level, what do we choose? Who knows? I mean, we don't choose anything, you know, life chooses us. But at a conscious level, clearly, I could have lived a very different kind of life um, in the US and whatever, um, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, and you must have been, as you keep saying, people ask, why did you come back? Yeah, for a long time mm -hmm. I had no answers. Just it was much. And time. the first person you stayed with thought you went back to seek a bride. Yes, yes. Right. Why else would you go back to Calcutta mm -hmm. for what reason? Uh, so I think that um, uh, I think that I'm very aware of it because I was there, then I left, and then I kept coming back, and. Um, so for me, there is a much more conscious relationship to the city. I chose to have a relationship, or maybe the city chose chose that I have a relationship. I mean, one of the things I read about it's a very strange thing to say, but you know, I used to keep go after I left Calcutta, I used to keep going back every summer. I was in graduate school, and I used to keep going back every summer and hang around. You know, I had no reason actually, no you know, no project or something. Yeah, yeah. Just going back, and not really clear why. And I think, you know, there was this kind of pull. And everywhere I went, you know, whenever I, I go to lots of places, and I would just, and this is something that happens to people in Calcutta a lot, that it kind of follows you, you know. I would see Calcutta everywhere. You know, it was like a ghost. That what does that mean? See Calcutta everywhere? I, I mean, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, so, <laughs> like, I'd go to the West Indies mm. for this cricket World Cup. Mm. My cousin's in the US, gone mm. west. So in this place called Grenada, I remember, we got on a minibus. And this guy was just, he was just like hot, yelling the names of the bus stoppages mm -hmm. and making this kind of sound on this. And it just made me so happy. Yeah. I mean, the stupidest thing in the world, like why did that? Because it reminded me of being in a minibus in Calcutta. Mm -hmm. The way they shout the names and the way they will hit the side of the bus. You know, sitting in Granada, you know, being followed by the ghost of Calcutta. I mean, this kind of thing has happened to me so many times. And it's not just me. This happens to be. I meet people in Delhi who are not even Bengali, but grew up in Calcutta, mm. who will echo these kinds of things, and sometimes just go out of their way to speak Bengali to me, just so that they can feel like they are in Calcutta for five for five minutes, right? Um, now, why I say this is so. Uh, uh, I made a choice. Now, saying that also, I also made a choice not to live there for the rest of my life because, in some way, it is also an unlivable city. For, for, it is not an unlivable city. People, people living there, but. It was a very difficult place, in other ways, uh, for me to live, you know, um, for the rest of my life. That the kind of life maybe that uh, I would have wanted, uh, I wouldn't be able to have, and that's a lot of the tension in the book, you know, mm -hmm. um, in the city. So it is this kind of a, you know, uh, it's uh, yeah. I mean, I think that 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 is. Uh, that is constantly there. I mean, I think the one thing though is that uh, the sensibility that I have, the way I am in the world, is very much a function of, I mean, it's a function of a lot of things, but one is very much of having lived in a formative point in my life mm. in that city. It's the way I engage with people, the things, you know, I mean, you asked me about caravan before. One of the things I like about caravan, the neighborhood the caravan is in, it reminds me of Calcutta, you know, this old Delhi yeah, kind, of, yeah. you know, kind of like Dalhousie office for a kind of neighborhood, and I can go downstairs and have a cup of tea on the street, and, you know, and then, you know, I can have a chat with my, you know, my friends and colleagues in the newspaper, and we can have a kind of very dysfunctional, not very unproductive way of working, which is based much more on friendship and kind of, you know, kind of adda 
which of course is very productive, but is not, <laughs> not not along the conventional dimensions yeah. of not linear industrial productivity. Industrial productivity, yeah. of course, you know. Uh, but now why is that? Because that's a sensibility that I have, you know, that I have inside me. So, um, and I think that will no matter where you go, where I go, that will probably stay because it's a formative experience. And um, so. And yet, someone else in almost identical uh, circumstances as you would probably be, might be very glad to have escaped Calcutta. Of course, yeah. Most people would probably fall into that. Yeah, I mean, when we, I mean, at the time when we met first, you know, my parents left in 1990, I mean, even when I came back, you know, in 2001. Even 1990, I dare say the gap between Calcutta and the rest of India at least was not as wide as in is. many respects as it is now, but not the gap. As you said, may not necessarily be for the better in every respect. I think for a lot of ways, the back gap may not. What kind of a life do you have? What kind of you know? I mean, uh, the you know, I mean, it's. I think we all have to think about what we are doing. I mean, what kind of life we are trying to. What is it we want? You know. Yeah. Um, what kind of life is it that we? I think in Africa, if you have a job and a salary that enables you to live in a respectable way, mm -hmm. I mean, the quality of life and there's people like that I know. Quality of life in Calcutta is much better than it is in most of the advanced metros because you have, yeah, you have friends, you have a kind of you know, So you're saying even for the upper middle class, it it, it, it might actually be uh, better. I think it is. There are people now I know. I've met people in Delhi who mm -hmm. who have jobs that are not nine to five. You know, creative mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Some of them who live in Calcutta because it's it's cheaper. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they have some kind of a setup. They have some family there. Their friends are there, and you know. You know, they can have much better quality of life uh, day to day, and then they can come to Delhi or Bombay when they need to do work and go back. I mean, go in, whatever, you know. Photography. So now you've written your book, yeah. the book is out. You probably got some first reactions to it. There have been some reviews. I saw a great review in FT. Uh, one or two reviews are yeah. coming out. It's coming out now, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's only yeah. this coming out. You'll get reviews in India. And of course, because almost every other uh, book reviewer or journalist in Delhi, at least, is from Calcutta. You'll get a whole bunch of. <laughs> you, this is one book that will get a, a whole lot of attention. Uh, sorry, are there some questions? Yes, could you tell me what they are? Because I'm not able to get it on my uh, phone. So, so yes. Uh, Jasmine Shima asks, why did you decide to come back to Kolkata after spending so much time in the States? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, you know, initially I'd come back because I had gone there at school and college. So, I used to work in newspapers. Um, mm. In the U.S., you know, you can work in newspapers from like a very young age. So, right. 14, 15, I was working in newspapers, local local newspaper, school newspaper, and uh, and then so uh, in the middle of college, the second year of college, mm. in college I used to work in newspaper. Uh, my family came on a trip to Calcutta, and uh, you know what is now the norm, I think, even here, is uh, you know I was free over the summer, so I had to do an internship. So I thought, okay, I'll go to Calcutta, I'll do an internship. At the statesman, because that is a newspaper. Yeah. We were taught, you know, every morning my mother would give me the statesman. Yeah, that's where you're supposed to learn your English. English, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I would read the sports pages of the statesman as a child before going to school, and so I thought, okay, I'll go to the statesman. And once I did that, I think that after that, you know, I mean, I, I, nothing that I could have done working in a newspaper, I think, in the U.S. I mean, it would have been as fascinating as working as a newspaper in Calcutta. I mean. You know, it was an extremely difficult thing, but I was also young, so I was willing to do all of the things that were difficult. Um, but in terms of the world that you have before you, you know, I mean, it is just, you know, I mean, it's a, for a newspaper reporter, it's a tremendous and yeah. exciting city. So then I came back, I took a job, you know, after graduation, and then I worked there. So from the account you gave of working at the Statesman with Mike, Mike yeah. Flannery, yeah, yeah. and the time you spent at Chota Bristol and <laughs> so on. It, it reminded me in a strange way of Augusta Shen with his first job <laughs> in the bureaucracy. <laughs> which was so much, of, so little about work and so much about it. That's a great book also. Yeah, yeah, yeah isn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay, there's so some more questions. Um, Sneha Khande is asking, um, was the title of the book inspired by anything in particular? The Epic City? No, just, we didn't have a title for a long time and then it just kind of came together. Uh, there's a chapter in the book about Pujo, which is called the Epic City. Yes. And so I just thought we'll use that. Use that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Question from Medha Bosch. Why do people only think of Kolkata when we talk of Bengal? 
Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I think that's actually a very good question. Um, we shouldn't. I mean, even I am guilty of this. I mean, how much of Bengal do I know? I mean, very little. I, you know, I was, you know, my entire upbringing is in, in Kolkata. I come from my father's side. We come from a Bangal family, so we have no rural roots in West Bengal. You want to explain Bangal and Goti? Some Bangal, people might not know. People originally from East Bengal, Hindus from East Bengal who came after partition to, uh, to West Bengal. Most of them settled in uh, Calcutta and the surrounding kind of suburban areas mm -hmm. within 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers. And by the way, you do know that in the context of football, they were often referred to as Germans. Germans, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because they were so tough. Yeah. <laughs> East Bengal was so tough. Of course, when I was a kid, already East Bengal had uh, Nigerian players. Who did you support? I support Mohan Bagan. Actually, my father supports Mohan Bagan. Very interesting. Traitor. Yeah, yeah. No, my mother is Goti, first of all. But my father... Even it makes you what they call a Bati. Bati, yeah. I'm yeah. 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 But uh, my father, he, there are seven brothers. And the sixth and seventh, my father's sixth brother, sixth and seventh brother who, brothers who were born in Calcutta after partition, they are Mohan Bagan supporters. And you shared disgust with the other five. Other, the other five are all these So my uncle used to watch, he was the one who I used to watch football with, you know, as a kid. And he would say, what? And I said, my father is Mohan Bagan, I'm Mohan Bagan. And so, but uh, now of course I watch this stuff and it's like, it's yeah, unwatchable. Yeah, 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 but, um, yeah, yeah, but I don't have a connection to the rest of Bengal. I mean, my mother had some, my mother's family also has lived in Calcutta since for a hundred years or so. So I don't have a village, you know, mm. and I'm so, they said, 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 so that's one big point that so many of people came over from what is now Bangladesh that there was no concept of a Deshe for yeah. them anymore. And even yeah. the Calcutta people, that, even on the Beng uh, Ghoti side, I don't yeah, know. They, they, they they the, yeah, their memories only are of Kolkata. Kolkata. We are urban people basically. Yeah, urban people, yeah. Okay, uh, question from Nitin Balecha. <laughs> Two questions. First, does Kolkata still retain its old world charm? Old world charm? I think it retains a lot of charm. <laughs> Okay, and his second question is, isn't Kolkata becoming a hotbed of political turmoil and extremism of late? Yeah, it is. That's true. You know, I mean, the Kolkata that I write about is a pre-2011 uh, Kolkata. And sometimes when I go back, go to the city now, I feel like the city has changed mm. in ways that I was born in that Kolkata. I mean, I was born after the coming of Left Front. And the book I wrote is before the end of Left Front. Yeah. So in some ways, my Kolkata is left front Kolkata. Yeah. And the city is a very different place now and a much more... I, fi I think it is a very scary place in a lot of ways because uh, there are dangerous undercurrents. I mean, I was talking about the violence before. Mm. There are always dangerous undercurrents that are there in a city where there is so much poverty, where there is so much struggle. Yeah. Even for middle class people, there is so much struggle on a day-to-day -day basis and frustration. And if certain things that are there, you know, uh, if they don't exist, certain ways that we have of being civilized, the things that I was talking about, which nobody ever writes about or talks about and people laugh at and things. Mm -hmm. But if those things, you know, those local level kinds of ways mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. how people are, relate to each other, you know, you know, um, you know, how people are socialized at the neighborhood level, you know, growing up in a para, uh, you know, the poetry competitions and you yeah. know, the Rovindra and the Pujo and the this and the, all mm. these little things. If those things slowly fall apart, then there is really nothing to keep that society from people from just going all out and uh, doing violence. I mean, and we are going in that. I mean, I don't know we are going in that direction. I see a lot of undercurrents right now happening um, in Kolkata. And in Bengal, there's a lot of violence that's been happening in the last three or four years. Uh, and I see, looking at it from the long view, of history mm. is a very dangerous kind of trend. Yeah, yeah, I understand. This is a good question from Shweta Jain, and I don't know how we're doing for time, but it might be a good question to end with if we're nearing the end. Um, um, she says a lot of people talk of uh, Calcutta with a view to the past or with nostalgia. What is the future of Calcutta? I mean, what's the future? I think the future is. The future of any city. I mean, I think that Kolkata, in some ways, is very well poised because um, the, uh, the the destruction that has that is sort of ongoing in many of the other cities in the name of development right now has been more limited in Kolkata. So when this phase ends, it's like you know, it's like that phase of Nehruvian development when they were building dams everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, at that time they thought they were being very you know modern and progressive, and then now we realize what a disaster it was. Yeah. Uh, and the places that that didn't happen, they were spared. And we are in a same, similar kind of phase right now, uh, of a kind of blindness towards the kind of uh, you know self harm that we are doing. 
Kolkata, I think, is, has been lucky that that kind of self-harm has been quite limited. On the other hand, of course, people need to have jobs, they need to have you know, decent yeah. ways of living. And, you know, if we can have a little more of that, then I think Kolkata has, has a, at a foundational level, we have, you know, um, a lot of great things. We, I mean, it is, a, it is still a great city, you know. It is a great city in the sense that it is a city. It is a place that people... Yeah, you know. despite its relative lack of history. Compared to say a Delhi, for example, yeah, city. It's a city. People come from Calcutta. Yeah. They, they know. Even a guy who is just doesn't matter who they know. They, you know, they belong to a, a, a kind of urban civilization kind of thing. I mean, a civilization. I mean, there's a weight of that city behind every individual. Right? Yeah, every individual. Yeah. Even the most based normal, yeah. uneducated. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that they are part of that culture, and um, you can't just wipe that out, and you don't. And that is an enormous kind of asset, you know. Um, I remember that in the book, I don't know if it came in the book, but there was one guy who had talked to Bhajan and Naxalite, and then he had been, you know, then the Naxalite movement ended, he was, yeah. you know, he was one of the people who went on with his life, mm. got, a, got a job as a clerk in the yeah. Ledger's building, you know, raised a family, etc. Et and he said, you know, uh, one day, you never know what the future holds, because, you know, Tagore didn't come out of nothing. Tagore came out of three generations. Yeah. And then a Tagore was produced. And then 12 children before him. <laughs> 12 children before him. Yeah, 13. Yeah. <laughs> so all of these things today that failed and all of these things that, you know, you think that this, this society is finished. Mm -hmm. But maybe these are the stages you mm -hmm. need to go through. The, the next thing, you know, the foundation is there. So the next that's thing. interesting. Would you see, I mean, I know there's a wild statement, but in some sense it seems to me that Calcutta is probably still the only city where people still dream of a of a revolution <laughs> rather than evolution, <laughs> evolution. <laughs> yeah. I know gradually improving things and yeah. so on. I think or even rapidly but not I mean it's not on that same trajectory they still think that something is going to explode something yeah. big is going to happen yeah. I think that thinking is also wrong yeah. I think uh, yeah, I don't agree with that's that going to happen. Yeah. well I just don't think I think that that's not how things happen, mm. happen. I don't know I think that that thinking is a little bit also wrong headed like yeah. um, this kind of romanticization that there will be a revolutionary uh, I think that okay. This, the things that have happened actually are revolutionary. The thing that, you know, the, the, the city that, I mean, if you think about, you know, something to say, if you think about the fact that after partition, the city grew in five years as much as it was supposed to in 50 years. Yeah. Huh? Now, imagine if that happened to London or New York. Exactly. Who, how they, no other city in the world possibly has faced this kind and of Nobody has faced it. Nobody. Situation. And how would they have faced it? Today they talk about a refugee crisis with a few boatloads of people. Yeah. How would you face if you had suddenly five million people in the capital metropolitan area suddenly showing up in the five years? How, yeah. Yeah. How, will you, how would you deal with it? Now, uh, the city, over through a uh, complicated, long process, figured out a way. And mm. today, you cannot tell the difference between those people who came That's right. The simulation was complete. Complete. Huh? So, you know, um, the thing is that that's how change happens. You know? And we have, you know, I mean, if we just pay attention to the, the world that we live in and what has actually happened, as opposed to some nonsense that somebody's yeah, put in our head, yeah. then we will see that that is actually how we came to be the people that we are. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that is how things will continue to happen. Yeah. Okay, one question from Pradipta Shortcut. I think it's Pradipta, not Pradipto. Yeah. You mentioned that several people choose to live in Calcutta even if work is elsewhere, provided their work allows for their flexibility. But that begs the question of whether a return to Calcutta is essential for living that relatively better quality of life. And work isn't all that easy to come by in Calcutta. What are your thoughts on this? So, sorry, if return to Calcutta? Yeah, it is essential, um, but that begs the question whether a return to Calcutta is essential for living that relatively better quality of life that you're referring to in mm. Calcutta, because work isn't very easy to come by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. I mean, you know, I mean, even the central, I was saying, those people who are either able to work outside Calcutta, or even actually, you know, I have a, a lot of my friends and relatives, cousins, who work outside Calcutta, mm. um, you know, Hyderabad, Bangalore, Bombay, Delhi. Once they got an opportunity, they move back, even with taking a little right. bit of a salary right. cut. Right, yeah. You know, they could transfer in their mm. same company to a Calcutta office. Once that thing opened up, in the two, you know, after maybe the last 10 years or so, many of them chose to come back to Calcutta. If that opportunity was there, but that's not there for everybody. And mm. yeah, people still need to have more jobs. I, mean, I, I agree with that. I so now, what about you? Are you done with Calcutta? Because you've written your book, and now you uh, you are in another part of the country trying working on another yeah. book. Yeah. So, what's your future with Calcutta going to be like? I mean, I will still always go there. I will still. I mean, there are so many things. I mean, it's one book. I you know there, there are so many things. I mean, you are a translator of English literature. How much? I mean, you know, sometimes I think that I didn't do anything in this book, you know, that we have 
two hundred years of a literary archive. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I am a. It is like a, you know, a, you know, a footpath account of the city, but an account of a, a literary account of. Uh, you know, that would be great. That really is a book. Yeah, begging to be written. Yeah, and that requires so much knowledge. Literary history study. of Calcutta. Yeah. You know, in going and thinking of that kind of imagination, I don't have the. You know, that would, I don't have the skill to do that. I would have to study and you know. And, but there are so many things in Calcutta. Yeah. Uh, a hundred books could you be. You think there's a lot more to explore and write, and yeah, and and we may hope that you might be doing some of it. Yeah, and other people also. I think. Yeah. I hope it spawns. I mean, really, I hope that it will spawn yeah. a lot of things. Yeah. Young people will, you know. Yeah. That's great. Thank you so much, Kushan. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Do you have any parting message for viewers? <laughs> no, I don't. Thank you for taking the time to participate. Thanks a lot. Thank you for watching, everybody.